at number one. We anticipate that Alabama will remain there. And the Crimson Tide ran the table in the regular season in the SEC. They are 10 and 0. At number two, has to be Notre Dame, right? Fighting Irish, also 10 and 0, off last week as they prepare for the rematch in the ACC title game that Kirk and Chris Fowler will call on Saturday afternoon from Charlotte College. Game day will be there against Clemson, who I assume is going to be number three. Is that correct? It is. Dabo Swindy's Tigers holding firm at number three. So now we've got one, two, three. You've got an Ohio State team that's only played five games. You got Iowa State that we haven't seen, and you got Texas A&M, who's also had a little bit of time off due to the coronavirus. So let's look at number six. Iowa State, despite the loss to Louisiana, who has a better record, the Raging Cajuns with a 17-point victory over Iowa State in the opener. We like to say every game counts. Apparently, that one has been mitigated. At number five, one spot ahead of Iowa State, is Texas A&M. The Aggies also have only played eight games. They play Tennessee this weekend. It'll be one game on their schedule that they were unable to make up. So hanging in at number four is Ohio State. Half the number of games of the three teams ranked in front of them and fewer games than the two teams directly behind them. But an opportunity to win the Big Ten championship, to have a couple of quality wins among their six if they're able to beat Northwestern by beating Indiana and the Wildcats, and seemingly only a win away from making it into the college football playoffs. So what's your reaction to, to what you see, Kirk? I think what you just said, the fact, if Ohio State was going to drop down because of number of games, it would have been last week or this week. The reality is what it is with Ohio State, with everything that's gone on, the fact that they are sitting there at 5-0, and they're able to play this weekend in Indianapolis against Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern. If they were to win that game and be crowned Big Ten champion, they're playing. They're 60 minutes away, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. They're 60 minutes away from making it into the playoff. The, 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 the question to me, David, is the other games, the game in Charlotte. What will be the results of Notre Dame and Clemson and what that potentially could do if it all – I mean, I've heard Dabo Sweeney say if Clemson loses, they're still good, that they should be in even with two losses. Uh, I think we all agree that if, it's, that, that if Notre Dame uh, were to lose, that both of those teams would probably be in. So I, I think uh, – I know you love chaos. You like Armageddon. What do, what do you think of what we have, and what, <laughs> what's your favorite Armageddon situation coming up next weekend? I do love some chaos. Um, I think if you have Notre Dame beat <laughs> Clemson, let's let the fun begin. I mean, <laughs> I think it would be – outstanding um, just to see what happens next because you know four out of the last six years number five has made it into the college football playoff it's not a horrible spot to be in if you're Texas A&M so you know listen I, I think that Notre Dame how they lose will be interesting to see how they judge if they lost but Clemson losing throws in a scenario where it would just be fun there'd be a lot of discussion and it's going to be a lot of if ands or buts and what you like best Joey it, and it gets interesting to me, Kirk, and you mentioned that Dabo said, you know, thinks that they should be in even if they lose. Well, if you look at Florida's situation and Florida just fell one spot and losing to a three-win LSU team, if Clemson goes on and loses to Notre Dame, which is number two in the country for a second time, gives them two losses, why would they assume that they're going to fall more than one spot, which is exactly what Florida did? The other side of it, if I'm Cincinnati, I'm really upset right now. I'm really not happy about the fact that we were we fallen a spot each week after not playing and it's not their fault. And so as we have all these discussions about teams not playing versus teams playing versus teams playing five games, how many games you get in, it seems as if some teams are being punished for not playing football games and some teams are not. And so if I'm one of the little guys, if I'm Cincinnati and I'm always scratching and clawing to be considered one of the big boys, I look at this and what's going on and say, look, this is not fair. We're being punished for not playing and it's not our fault. Joey, I, I, I think my biggest takeaway from this past weekend was that two spots are now taken. Bama has been number one, every ranking coming out after beating Arkansas. Uh, they're going to get in no matter what, even if they lose to Florida. You're not, they're not going to move them off the number one spot outside the top four, even with a loss against the Gators. And I think with the Gators losing to LSU, that really helped out Notre Dame. Uh, last week, I thought that if 
A situation came up where a one-loss Florida would have beaten Alabama, and Ohio State looked really good in their Big Ten title game against Northwestern. If Clemson blew Notre Dame out, there was a chance maybe the Irish would drop out of the top four, but after UNC pummeled then number 10 Miami this past weekend and the Gators lost against LSU. You take a look, Kirk, at Notre Dame's resume right now. Those wins against Clemson and against UNC, that's really impressive in the committee's eyes. And even if they were to lose and maybe even lose by 20 plus points against Clemson this upcoming weekend, I still think, Kirk, their resume stacks up well against what could be a 6-0 Big Ten champion, Ohio State, or even an 8-1 and Texas A&M. You know, one thing I just wanted to add real quick before Reese uh, hops back in, I, I just wanted to say that if, if whether it's it's right or wrong, there's a perception with Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State that, that they are the better teams and better programs in college football. And if, if the shoe were on the other foot, and Alabama, let's say, played five games, or Clemson played five games, and the five games that they played, they looked dominant. And then they were going to go off into their conference championship and, and, and go have a chance to win their conference and play six games. I would guarantee you that they would be facing the same situation that Ohio State is facing. So you can say that's unfair. The committee's trying to put the best four teams in the playoff. And, and that's where this subjective analysis, I think, is, is, is very frustrating for a lot of people. I don't want to say it's a different set of rules, but it's a different perception based on the equity that Alabama and Nick Saban, what Urban Meyer and now Ryan Day has done at Ohio State, and what Dabo Sweeney has created at Clemson, because Ohio State was 1-0, and Reese, and the AP had them at number three in the country. So there's a, a consensus that they're an elite team. It just comes down to the amount of games. But if Clemson and Alabama had that same scenario, they would also be getting that benefit. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.